from the furthest reaches of the universe to the innermost depths of the mind, this is Final Frontier News. Good evening, everybody. It is 1041 p.m. on May 17th, 2016. Happy to be here with you for Final Frontier News. I believe this is... Uh, Episode five, I think. Uh, That's uh, right. Episode five. I can count. It's it's amazing. We're here with uh, Dave Rose. Jesse is here as well. Glad you guys could join us. We're going to have a good time tonight, I think. Earth grid system. Earth's grid system, rather. Or as I typed it, Earth grid system. Uh, and its relation to ancient structures is the main theme for this. And I know that all day... Dave was pumping out news and information in regards to this phenomena, or maybe, or maybe should, I should just uh, call it the facts. Yeah, I was gonna say it's just the way it is. It's just the facts. It's um, and and I do also want to comment tonight, and I should have mentioned in this video that we had a very close call in New England with a over the uh, skies of Maine with a uh, comet or a meteorite or something that was huge. Um, it's quite uh, interesting, so maybe we'll talk about that later too. But Dave, um, you know, explain this whole thing um, to us because I really don't under quite understand it yet. I was looking at some of the photos you sent about Earth's grid system, but um, how does how does it relate to ancient structures on the planet? We've seen ancient structures talked about in relation to aliens or in relation to space and, and how uh, or the sun hitting the Earth, but but how does it? follow this grid system well first of all we have to start back with what is the earth grid system also known as the planetary grid system the earth is essentially a living macrocosm it is essentially a being with several different mic um uh, several different types of biomes and, and beings that live upon it and with it. So with that, and just like a human being, it would have a energy chakra system. Mm. Now that chakra system, as you might see on a human being with all the different um, chakras that we have in our body, relate to the earth because the earth itself also have a has a very similar system this is the grid system this is essentially a bunch of different points on the earth that not only emanate great amounts of energy that very highly affect the human body but they also connect to different points amongst the earth, uh, around the earth and amongst themselves and all these points together form a sort of grid system when you draw essentially lines from one point to the other. And there's several different points, several different types of systems. So there's essentially multiple types of grids that overlap each other on the planet Earth. But without question, without doubt, and scientifically proven, these things exist. They've been referred to as most commonly ley lines, the lines that attach each of these grid points together. Some people have called them lie lines, but more commonly they're called ley lines. And with places like the Great Pyramids of Giza, at the Giza Plateau, you have magnetic anomalies that occur there where you have essentially, according to this grid system, a nexus point a location where all these lines form together or they, they cross at one point and you have uh, amazing reactions with the human body with this energy system around it. Mm -hmm. Now, these have been referred to as dragon lines in the East, in, in Oriental and Asian cultures. They've been referred to as ley lines in, in the West, for example, in England and, and Wales, where you have a lot of these stone monuments. And they've been known for a long time. So this is a, is a, a phenomenon that, although not officially recognized by mainstream yeah. science, is recognized as existing. Dave, I have a question for you because and that's something I've wondered. I haven't done as 
really any research into this. Um, I just understand that it works and what it is. But um, obviously there's major areas all over the planet where they intersect and where there's specific power points and whatever, right? Um, but it just just around your anyone's like neighborhood, are there these lines all over the place? Like it, not necessarily uh, crossing or whatever, but, you know, just – can you find uh, anywhere online where it shows you, you know, where you have these around you, where the yes. most energy is? Yes, you can. There's several different maps out there. I've provided Joe with several images that I've show some, some of the more main lines that exist. But just like a magnetic field, and if you understand field theory and wave theory, you understand that you can't. Although that you can map these things as a field, it mm -hmm. it becomes – at certain levels, it becomes more of a um, a field in a true sense. It, you cannot uh, define it as a line. It's, it's more of a field. It's a balloon. And that the same thing is that with the energy because, again, energy, you can't, again, uh, just define it as one – particular line and it, I'm, it's hard to de describe these sorts of things um verbally well, i'm just curious about like you know because i'm in like a desert area it's like it'd be cool to look and see what areas around here, even okay, if i have to, drive um, to it, you know mount shasta mount shasta is in california have you ever been around there ever heard of it i've heard of it never been around no okay it is considered a nexus point hmm in one of the many in North America, but it's apparently a place of great power. The Aboriginal and Native people of that area always considered it that, and apparently this is where uh, where multiple lines end up joining, and you have a nexus point. Well, while you've been uh, talking about this, Dave, I pulled up Mount Shasta, and uh, so everybody gets a good look at it. It's actually, even just looking at it. It is very interesting. It's uh, almost a a double mountain, like a double rainbow. Now, you had also asked the second portion as well of that question is, what about these ancient structures? And this is really important to understand because although at some point in the future we'll be able to delve more into ancient civilizations and what they actually knew, what we know right now today is that the majority of these megalithic ancient amazing structures have been built either on one of these ley lines or on a nexus point where these ley lines join together or cross there's history is replete of Temples, churches, um, places of worship, yeah, being built, m mounds to to fallen heroes, as as they would call them in the ancient age, or uh, fallen giants, as as they're actually referred to. Um, they've actually built these structures on these ley lines, on these places of power. Many druids, many Wiccans, many cultures that are non-Western in their religious and or um, spiritual or philosophical beliefs yeah. do conduct ceremonies at these locations. Why? Oh, yeah, that, because they are why. aware yeah. that these energies exist at these points, at these locations, and that you can utilize them as the ancients did. And it's very important to understand that these ancient civilizations, no matter what some people might think about their levels of technology, clearly were light years beyond us because not only did they have knowledge to create structures like they have either in Giza, whether it be in um, Machu Picchu, Cusco, the, uh, Nazca, Easter Island, um, um, her cut, um, and the list goes on and on and on. They had not only knowledge of amazing technology to create these structures, but also of the grid system that exists on this planet 
to not only align these structures perfectly within seriously uh, fractions of an inch in um, accuracy on a line, sometimes miles or hundreds of miles uh, apart and make them perfectly aligned as well as even aligned to star systems. So that is amazing when you consider that it is intrinsically bound with this earth grid system that exists. They're tied together and it cannot be denied. It's a uh, it's it's now who who reports on on the grid system because I haven't had my ears open enough to know where I would have learned about this for the first time other than like a speculative uh maybe documentary or something like that. Where where is this validated by the scientific community? Well, initial initially ley lines for example were postulated in the late 1800s and the uh, well actually it was a little bit um well it was discussed in the 1800s but by the 1920s this guy called Al alfred watkins came out and uh started to describe these things and at this point they were measuring stonehenge for example and all the different uh, Neolithic sites that exist in Wales, uh, England, and Scotland, and even in Ireland. You have all these amazing locations, not, not just Stonehenge, for example, but Salisbury Hill and many other um, uh, mounds, um, standing stones and structures oh, that, um, that essentially um, – are aligned to different star systems and by mm -hmm. studying these things and and seeing how they're aligned with different uh holy structures you you start to realize that there is this sort of system and then when mapped with the the different um magnetic uh sort of results from that area you you get this uh information but there's it's not just him there's many other people and although there's different theories uh this has been essentially just about accepted as being fact yeah um okay. as far as all the like yeah like the, i think one of the places that um i don't know that we have in this country that's like a big one isn't that in homestead florida like as far as one of the major megalithic sites uh, well, actually, there's a place just off Florida that is um, a major point where all these different lines meet, and it's apparently connected with an area that is now referred to as the Bermuda Triangle. But there's a lot of energy that apparently manifests itself at this point that's off the coast of Florida. How how are these grids? I'm sure they are, but... Um, as we all know, things are affecting us every day that we have no idea about. But not only I, I assume these are grids affect us, but but my my I guess on top of that is depending on where you live and what you surround yourself around. How does the grids affect the Wi-Fi, the electrical signals, the uh, the pollution, the air, um, the currents? Like you know, does does the uh, do the grids reach out everywhere, or is this is just is it something? Uh, is that more than isn't that more earth based dave as far as the lines and then like the the wi-fi is kind of wi-fi is wi-fi is more of an overt type of signal it's immediately visible and evident but it's not as powerful as you would find with a ley line which is much more um covert but intrinsically uh and indefinitely more powerful than Wi-Fi. We're talking about, again, the powers that bind the planet, that bind the solar system together, yeah. gravity, electrogravitic energy. We're talking about stuff that's, that's separated by hundred, hundreds of millions of miles. And yet the planets continue to do their dance and continue to do their orbits and they continue to affect each other like the moon with the earth and the tides. And that is way more powerful than something as puny as and and, and contemporary as Wi-Fi. Does – um, I, I want to mention Benjamin Schroeder in the chat. He said, Joe, I'm pretty sure that uh, Shasta looks – 
like that because it's a stratovolcano. Um, its last eruption was 1786, and he mentions his dad was evacuated because uh, the government found out about it, and his dad had been evacuated. I find that uh, pretty uh, pretty interesting stuff. Now, some of the graphics that I sent you showed some very good points on the planet. Again, sites that were built thousands of years ago, and if you align them with star systems, you actually start to see, a, mm -hmm. again, a continual reminder of a certain number. Not a coincidence, but an actual synchronicity that is pointing to a fact, something that is showing evidence. The year is 10,500 BC. Hmm. Most of these structures are essentially configured and aligned to the stars as they were back then on Earth. And you'll have uh, the pyramids, Stonehenge, um, the mounds in, in um, England, for example, in uh, Mesopotamia, like uh, the Babylonians and Sumerians, uh, in Thailand um, and, and uh, Cambodia. There's a lot of ancient structures there. And even in Mexico and South America, you have all these ancient structures that are, again, geared towards a certain time that shows that something cataclysmic happened at that point. But again, all these different sites are configured not just on this grid alignment, this grid system that we're talking about, but also with planetary star alignments. Okay. Well, now, what what alignments have they... Do you, do you have examples of the alignments that you can see, like in plain sight, that, you know, this matches up with Orion, this matches up with other systems, or, or the well, Big yes, Dipper? Well, uh, yes, the... the um, well, uh, the most commonly known one is the pyramids at Giza where they align mm -hmm. with uh, not only with Orion essentially <clears throat> if you were to overlay the stars if the sky was above obviously Orion and uh, sorry the sky was above the pyramids and Orion was directly over the pyramids and the pyramids aligned with the belt of Orion the triplet kind of goes right over them it would, but if it was aligned exactly um, as it was with the stars, like directly upwards, it would have been play uh, and and joined with the fact that at that exact point, the Sphinx is staring at its essential reflection on the horizon. Right on the horizon, you have the constellation of Leo. So both the Sphinx looking at itself in its astral spot in the sky as well as the pyramids with the constellation of Orion directly above it and corresponding the, the main the three pyramids corresponding with the belt of Orion that date again is 10,500 BC there's a city mm. in uh, South America essentially that um Tiwanaku, I believe, is the exact name. And you have a location where, again, it's aligned to the stars. It's made specifically so that the, sky, the sun is shining in a certain direction through certain stones on yes. the spring equinox, on the summer solstice, and on the, uh, you know, on basically all four of the cardinal points of, of the uh, year. So, yeah. you know, w winter, they, uh, equal. go ahead. Well, no, no, I'm just agreeing, but they, um, didn't all of these, uh, when they built all of these and stuff, didn't it kind of, isn't it what led mathematically to such formulas like pi and whatnot? Well, that's the thing though. They could not have built these structures without those, that knowledge in those. But it was, it was long before those were actually kind of well, the, though, uh, brought up. Yeah, those those theories supposedly only came about 3000 BC. 
with the ancient Greeks. But clearly that knowledge was well available when it came to people like the Egyptians who were able to create the pyramids. See, that's why I feel like I've, I've said it a few times on several shows and just in private with you guys, like how like uh, the left right brain thing, how everyone, everything's moved to more of a masculine side, um, very much about data and technicalities and, and all that stuff, but forgetting about just plain old feeling and, and intuiting back in the day that like they didn't have as they just went on what they felt and what made sense, what was natural. And um, they were more in tune with the earth than we could even dream of nowadays. Um, Bro, what, I just I think what, what, what does this lead to though? I mean, you know, I mean, like we talk about this and which uh, part? The, the, what is the, the grid system? How how should we be paying attention well, to these? Here, well, we we were gonna also go into um. Well, they I mean they're a source of power, but I mean if there's also what these places were used and built for as well. Um, we were gonna go into acoustic right, Dave? And shit like that. What is that? Sound yeah, healing and all that. Yeah, I wonder no, what that, that means. That what is different. <laughs> okay, because I was like, what is what does that have to do? With well, because I remember in the chat we were saying how it, uh, or at least I know I was. I was saying how it all kind of com all comes together, sort of. But because even I mean, most churches, most um, I don't know, a lot of places they're built for usually specific purposes, whether it's the way the sound travels or or because they're on a ley line and it's source of power. Yeah. Well, yeah. there's again, there's a lot of different places on the planet there, and you ha again, you find a lot of churches, a lot of different places of worship that are built on these pla uh, places. There's a place called Rennes le Chateau in France. It uh, has a lot of mysteries that surround it. During World War II, this is again during um, the time that uh, Germany captured France and they invaded, and they. Seriously, just like the Indiana Jones movie, they invaded the place and they just sent their teams everywhere looking for stuff. Obviously, it was never officially revealed what, they're, what they were looking for, but there's a lot of information that came out and was revealed in uh, a, no a number of books that did discuss what uh, they were going for. But these sorts of places, again, when you look at all the different governments, all the different organizations that are l seriously looking into this. This is not some sort of pseudoscience fantasy. This is something that has been officially looked at by multiple groups, governments, and organizations as something that might be of benefit or at least of interest. So this, this stuff is out there. You do find a lot of these locations mm -hmm. essentially um, built on these lines and even the main cities of the original colonies of the United States are all built essentially on one straight line. So Boston, uh, Philadelphia, um, I'm doing this from memory here because, and again, I'm not American, so I don't remember all these, uh, all these cities here, but, uh, New York, um, and there's two more, I believe, uh, but they're all b basically on one straight line. And this this was for a reason. And this information has been known, again, for a long time by select number of hmm. people. No, yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's uh, um, yeah. You, I, yeah, I'm curious too, like uh, as far as – I mean, I'm, I'm not really asking. Oh, by the way, uh, sorry, I have to interrupt. Yes, uh, thank you, Simple Superior, to, to bring up the uh, the one point that I um, I knew I had to talk about. Um, I just it slipped my mind. The f the Fibonacci. Um, oh, the sequence. The Fibonacci sequence, exactly. That is something that comes together when it when it when we discuss these locations on earth and the manner in which the structures that are built on them are built. So thank you so much, S simple superior for reminding me of that. Well, that's a, that is uh so that is, did they, with the, well, I mean, with the Fibonacci sequence, I mean, we're talking about numbers where numbers found adding up, uh, like you two numbers before the numbers. So you start with zero and then there's a one, right? And then there's a sequence that goes like zero, one, one, Two, three, five, eight, and it, and it can be graphed uh, visually as well. Okay, like and you um, get basically a perfect uh, curve 
that you start to see in all other locations um, in in the natural world. Are you talking about um, in squared space, like squaring the space, or? No, I'm talking about uh, the the big spiral um, curve that comes out of the Fibonacci uh, um, equation, where basically the the same thing that you have with um, seashells, for example, the way that they curve, that is basically an exact exact map and replica of of that. Why do you get that curve though? Because you you would only get that curve if you put the numbers in those certain positions. Like why would you go left that, to right? And this is something that has been that people have tried to keep people ignorant of for the longest time. Yes. The, we see these uh, sacred geometric patterns throughout everything on this planet. Living things, non-living things, we see these things there. What is connecting all of us to this? Something that's not visible, something that is clearly strong enough to create this repeating uh, sequence, not only on a microcosm like on planet Earth, but on a macrocosm like with the formation of galaxies. What is that? That has to be some sort of invisible force, some sort of... Um, again, you could call it the force like in Star Wars, a chi, like they do in, in ancient uh, Asian cultures. But there's clearly some sort of energy system that is intrinsically connected between everything that exists. Could it just be that when things are set in motion a certain way, they're, they're just they're off to the races and, and they're going to continue and that's why these patterns are forming? Just like as if you were to... Uh, you know, throw, put a marble in your sink and it's going to rattle around. And maybe, around. maybe after you know, maybe if it happened two, three times, when it has two, when it happens two to three hundred times, two to three thousand times, then it's clearly no longer a pattern, but it is something that is is clearly a, a force. It's a quanta. Okay. Well, the um. Is there um? Would you say the Fibonacci is so Fibonacci is like the really is the main example of this, right? It. I'm not sure if it's the main example, but it is something that is just so tied not only to the creation of these ancient structures, the way that they're formed, the way that they're outlined, the way that they're uh, positioned and created, but it's also um, how the grid system on planet Earth is is basically formed when you start to look at where these locations are where these grid points are and how they relate to each other again you start to see this pattern pop up everything's again connected again. It's fucking i put a caller on the air but i don't know who it is i'm sorry i didn't put your name in here yeah what's going on joe what's up who is this it's uh it's wwe sucks dick oh there he is how you doing <laughs> so much for not Never mind. yeah how you doing man i'm doing great um this is actually a pretty interesting uh, thing I wanted to bring up. Um, me and Benjamin Schroeder in the chat. I'm like wannabe gamer in the chat. That's my YouTube channel and stuff. Um, we we kind of made up this little bit of a theory that maybe Columbus's journey took a turn because of the Bermuda Triangle. That is um, interesting because of, I don't know about Columbus with it yet, but I can definitely say that Obviously, something about the Bermuda Triangle with its magnetism or wherever it's located on the planet has always been very interesting. Um, but e but uh, putting aside Christopher Columbus for a second, because I think that's another debate. But before we get to Christopher Columbus, Dave, what do you think about what is does the Bermuda Triangle have any relation at all to this grid system? If you know, I don't know if you even know if they do, if it does. Absolutely, and I'm glad that you brought that point up. I didn't want to dive directly into that, but now that we've gotten to the point, mm -hmm. essentially there's multiple of these tri multiple triangles that exist on planet Earth that are essentially um, considered these these limbo points, these places of high energy that you get teleportation. Uh, transference to different dimensions and a lot more um there's a place called the devil's triangle in the pacific 
mm. that is uh, exactly the same. There's a place in the Mediterranean that's also the same. You should look it up. People should look it up who are calling right now. But uh, essentially the same sort of configuration exists around the planet of these voids that um, are created by the planet. Are you ever concerned, and I'm going to, I'll play devil's advocate here, are you ever concerned that these sequences, and they are sequences, so that's what kind of leads to this being this way, but we are so entrenched, or we're just so used to wanting to find patterns. The human mind and all the humans, we want to find patterns. We go, look, that looks like that thing, that looks like this thing. It, it it's the other, yeah. you know, you say, is there really something to seeing 1111 on the clock or 911 on the clock? Or is it our brain just taking off saying, oh, I recognize a pattern. I recognize oh, it's a, a little of both. <laughs> right. Well, exactly. And that could be what it is. But in with the with the Fibonacci sequence, we talk about the spiral, the spiral, of the numbers, the Fibonacci sequence of the galaxies that we see forming but all that across space. That it can be measured, but the, but the galaxy, but but our eyes say, look a galaxy, look a hurricane. Our hurricane looks like the spinning or spiral of the galaxy. Um, no, but we, observation is is different from um, from actually taking that that um, information in and actually categorizing it. So when when it is categorized, you do find that these patterns are uh, consistent. With with an actual overall uh, system. Do you believe that the Fibonacci sequence is seeding the universe? It's in. It's basically built into the fabric of the universe. It's a it's a pattern that we're going to continue to see because it's built in to the way that this that the universe yeah. is built. Any output from the universe is going to show that sequence. Interesting stuff, man. I just pulled up an article speaking of this now. I was just typing it in. I want to quickly ref uh, yes. respond to the caller in regards to Christopher Columbus. Okay. Uh, no, mm -hmm. he did not get thrown off by uh, the Bermuda Triangle. To my knowledge, he wasn't exactly sure of where he was going, but he knew it was not Asia. He was a part of several different mystery schools or what we call today secret organizations or um, what are they called? Uh, secret societies. Yeah, there you go. That's, that's, that's a more common term. But I've, I've, I've known many people in these supposed secret societies. And, you know, from Freemasons to Rosicrucians uh, to um, Shriners and, and, and many, many more. And really what they say about these organizations is not they're not secret societies. They're just societies with secrets. And one of the so things about the Masons now, Dave, is the Masons, it's like they hide out right out in the open because they've set up these, you know, it's almost like the Elks Club now, but that's not really the Masons. You know what I'm saying? In America, it's commercialized. They, uh, perhaps at the early levels, it's that way. But as you progress with any sort of organization that that teaches the mysteries, because again, the Freemasons and every other secret society that's out there was essentially a manner to transmit this old information in code from generation to generation and ensure that it continued to survive from ancient Egyptian days and even before to today. And that's the reason why we have, for example, the arch, which is not only an, a very big part of the lore of Freemasons and, any, and many other of these secret societies, but is also very important in the structures that we've been able to continue to build in um, in the world, and when you consider about, for example, the the Dark Ages, where a lot of technology was lost due to barbarians going into the old Roman Empire and, and destroying things, people like the Freemasons, and well, at that point they were just the Masons, they were able to keep this information and allow for these cathedrals, these structures, these castles to be built, and to retain this old information as well as as they've encoded in their arts information about the zodiac about the sun and the moon about 
the earth itself, about the grid system that we're on. And you see this stuff if you look at these ancient structures and the manner that they're built and the ornation that they have on them, you see that there's always been a very, very um, focused look um, on the zodiac, on the constellations, and on the grid system. Well, that was uh, that was crazy, man. That's that was a. R- I'm so glad the caller called because it we got so much more information. Out I of do you. apologize for droning on at some points, but these sorts of topics. But that was good, though. I, I you didn't. Have to. You, you really so do. There's so much that we could discuss this show, and we would love to be able to have this show go on for hours, but we can't, and we we really have to just introduce things at a certain point, and then eventually dwell deeper into it. But we would love to be able to just you know go all in here but it is a challenge to enjoy it not only make this enjoyable but also make it uh understandable we don't just want to throw it all out at uh, at you right 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 uh we have a caller on the line but he's a unknown phone number what's up i feel like he's gonna hang up yeah i thought so the unknown numbers are always you never well, know. Please call in, though. I would love to hear more from our callers, and, and the especially audience. from the people in the chat. They've got some great things to say, but uh, be sure to call in 339-226-6610. Yeah, you guys can call. We will take calls, 339-226-6610. If you're outside of the United States, you can Skype Danny Deadly, which is a front Skype name. That way I don't get millions of friend requests. So it's Danny Deadly, D-A-N-N-Y, D-E-A-D-L-Y. Uh, if you're outside the United States. Um, and thank you for calling, 339-226-6610. Where is my now, world flag that I wanted? Now, there is one thing I did want to mention as well, is there is apparently, again, one of these ley line nexuses that exists in Manitoulin Island, which is about a couple of, dry, uh, a couple of hours away drive from me. But... Nonetheless, um, it is a place that I'm very interested in visiting because as a place of power and a nexus point from all these ley lines, there is definitely some uh, form of energy that exists there that is is quite powerful. And um, I'm definitely interested in, in visiting it and, you know, checking it out. Okay, uh, so, um, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. My, my turn. For everyone in the chat... It's it's kind of simple, like, and I'm not challenging anyone's religious beliefs or anything. But if you want to know what God is, it's just consciousness. We're God, the wind, the fucking everything. Everybody. Like, when the universe was just doing its thing, you know, there was really just getting started. You got to think, like, say, like the Big Bang, right? The big spark, everything's going. When does the universe become conscious of itself? That's God. Its own consciousness. That's us. The fact that we can think, the fact that we can feel and and create, we're just a small speck of the universe, and it's all the same thing. Like, that is God. When you do something, that's why you're supposed to put your heart into it and put everything you got into it, because you're you're magic. You you are... Everybody is a piece of magic. Um... And if you don't think you are, well, then that's your only, that's your only hold back. <laughs> um, you just have to, believe, you know, you just have to um, be open-minded to it. Uh, so anyway, that's God. God is basically everything, and it's just consciousness. If you think it has to be something else, well, then you're, you're disconnected from it, and you're disconnecting from consciousness. Like, be open to it. Why does it have to be any particular thing? I'm saying it's everything, meaning I don't, I'm not just saying, oh, it's everything. No, I've spent 27 years figuring out all these little things that it can be good bad i went through a period in my life where i thought that um you know the god and devil thing i literally went with like okay well the devil's the good guy here god's the bad one because that's the perfect plan right uh you pretend to be good and you, you fool everybody i went through all this stuff it's all just consciousness so don't you know don't let it well, that's Screw debatable, but let's uh, let's move on. Well, no, because it's just, it creates. It, it is, it's, but it's debatable. It's sim- it's, I'm trying to simplify it, really. It's just, it's just simply you. Eight, <laughs> eight seven two. What's up? Hello, am I on? Hey, yeah, you're on. The, uh, you're on now. We're live. Oh my god. Um, 
Dave Ross, I don't know if you remember me. I'm G Smoker from uh, the YouTube channel. <laughs> I was chatting, trying to get on. Um, it's perfect. Joe, just like to say I'm a big fan of you guys. Thank you so much for, you know, representing the real, true wrestling fans. But on to my next question. Thanks. Um, so I mentioned earlier in my other comments about, I don't know if you guys are still talking about alien structures, but... Whatever um, you want to bring up, man. I, I would... It really baffles me of how everyone's so interested in space, but yet we have so much interesting shit under the water. Like, it's so mm. fucking crazy. This is the last like how, You know, we could send a fucking probe into space, but we can't send a probe that can, you know, descend how many miles below the deep sea. Yeah, and I well, figured that gravity in space would be a lot, lot more dense than it is would be in water, wouldn't it? No, well, you know no, what? It's, it's, it's less it's, dense. It's, it's less dense because, yeah. Okay. Imagine space. It's like you—you you just you, in space, you really just have to worry about heat, gas, and maybe some meteorites. Well, no, you have to worry about radiation, radiation. and a lot of other things. But yeah. it's the opposite. It's the the deep sea yeah, is crushed. the opposite of what space is. So the deep pressure that you find at very high, de uh, very low depths is the opposite of what you find in space, which is very low pressure. So it there, like there is a difference, but you're talking a, a great point. And if you look at locations like Gulf Breeze, Florida, you'll find that there's been a phenomenon that's been monitored for probably the last 30 years where you've got lights that go in and out of the water and essentially they're they're large but they're far away but people are recording them they've seen them and they go in and out of the water and there are several locations on the planet that seem to be Hot sort spots. of a lo uh, a location that these phenomenon congregate on and to assume that there's nothing under the water is absolute ignorance because if anything, 70% of the planet is covered. Whether you're some secret government organization or you're some alien race, if you want to stay hidden, where are you going to go? Hell yeah. Well, you're just go underwater, underwater. Dude, just think yeah, about sir. the fact that we're, we're finding stuff on the surface of the Earth all the time. That's now what I'm saying. we're still finding it. So to yeah, I mean to think seventy percent and, in, and yeah. we also have to consider the fact that the uh, that the water levels were a lot lower in exactly. previous times of the planet. So not only could there have been locations where you know UFOs would congregate or uh, other people would congregate, but they might still be active even after the water levels have risen. And also, I was, you know, just to that point, um, just going through, you know, all of history, recounts of all religious texts, they all come down to one catastrophic event where there could, there was a great flood at one point in time. So I, I was just, you know, in my conspiracy theory head, I always thought like maybe news about space could somehow be a distraction of bigger things that are going under the water. Things that we may not be going, you know, may not be interested in, but yet we hear things in space. We we forget about all other things that are actually, you know, pretty relevant or should be relevant in today's society. That's a very yeah, good. That's a good. That's a good way of putting it. Yeah. Um, in regards to the cataclysm, uh, that's something that we'll have to touch upon another time because there's a lot of information that um, is required for us to discuss on that. Yeah, I mean that maybe that's one of the next shows you know that we do. I mean. It relates it. a lot also to the grid system. Yeah. This was something that I was alluding to in our discussion that I was speaking to uh, you and Jesse in Facebook. But um, the location of all these different sites and structures on the planet, again, aligned to this grid system, relate directly to the last cataclysm that we had on this planet. This is a major revelation that I came to a few months back. And again, it's been something that I've been researching for a, a very long time. And I'm not the type of person to just hear a theory and come out. I attempt to disprove it with everything that I learn. That's the best way to figure out whether or not it's truthful is that you look in an attempt to disprove it, not on spite, 
but more on curiosity. So you look for alternative forms of information. Now, after all this information that I've deciphered and looked into, I'm willing to stake everything on uh, basically this information that I will reveal in a short time in regards to these structures and their locations on planet Earth and what that relates to in regards to the last Earth cataclysm. That is, uh, dude. I, we have to talk about that next time because I really want to get into that, and then the wa- and then the, the Earth and the water and exploring the oceans. That is definitely something that we need to get into and think of the things that they could find under there if we could sincerely map the ocean. But just think about the fact that we can really only get to what? What would you? Ten percent of the water? Ten? Twenty? Less than that? We can't get to it because we can't go under there. We'll be crushed. So if there was these pole shifts throughout the years on this planet or or changes in the water and changes, there's so much that could be down there that we have no and, idea. And it's been proven that the level of the sea has jumped and dropped multiple times in the past for several d- different reasons, including for Earth cataclysms. Right. So you find coral deep, deep down under the sea, hundreds of miles down under the sea, when normally coral cannot grow more than 150 meters below the surface. The only way that this could occur, as we see it right now, is because the wa- that the not only the water level rose, but mm-hmm. the height of the sea floor dropped. Yeah. So it's clearly showing that major changes have affected the earth and when you find things like animals flora and fauna plants and animals and all the different microbes that exist on a certain island that's you know for example on hawaii and they also exist on easter island where there's supposedly currently no land between the two you know that clearly at one point they were connected uh, and, and yeah, and that's just some of the proof. I mean, that the these, you know what I mean? You talk about the earth shifting, the poles shifting, the earthquakes, the Pangea. What was there before Pangea? What was what was after Pangea? How long did it, did, did this take um, to happen? You know, there's just, there's so much that we need to get into with this show. Um, but as far as the grid system to tie it up, and I know that people really, Dave, I think I want to tie up the grid system tonight, but... I think there's much more again to dive into. And guys, what we're going to be doing is coming up soon on this show, on, on this channel, we're going to be doing follow-up episodes to where we re, re um, we kind of relive or we um, review, we come back to uh, some of these episodes where we sort of, uh, especially Dave, was able to introduce us to many of these topics and we were able to touch on them a bit. But once we get into them slightly, what I end up doing, I know myself, is doing much more research on it because I'm more interested in it. And then I come back with more questions and more interesting facts. And and Dave already has those in his mind. And so I would like to come back and relive all of these episodes um, in, in a new program that we'll probably tape off air and we'll put up. And I think we'll, we'll come up with that soon for extra programming. Who the heck is tweeting me or texting me over and over again? Don't worry about it. It's just me. Okay. Uh, it's Facebook. Okay, I didn't turn my Facebook down. Um, so that being said, uh, Dave, would you have anything to close out on this situation or another spot to get to in a chapter of this? All I want to say is basically in conclusion that when you look at all these different locations on Earth where all these different sites exist and again you start to map them out and line them up you start to see a pattern now when you have cultures like the mesoamericans in mexico and the egyptians separated by literally hundreds of thousands or sorry i'd say tens of thousands of miles and yet they're using the same systems like pyramid building again on locations and grid points that supposedly these cultures don't know Mm -hmm. are too separated 
for, uh, in distance from knowing and you find the similarities between the two, that's no longer some sort of coincidence. That is a synchronicity that is clearly something indicative of something more, whatever it might be, but it's clearly something more. And I encourage our listeners here on the show to, again, to look into these ancient structures. Uh, Tiwanaku, uh, the Giza Plateau, uh, Ayers Rock, Devil's Rock, Easter Island, uh, Antak Amor, all these different places throughout the world. You'll find, again, these locations that are co uh, coinciding with the stars, coinciding with places on the planet that are located hundreds of miles away, and yet they're in perfect alignment. So all I can do is recommend that you look further into this because this is clearly not a coincidence. Yeah, I, it's well, something more. I, I do yeah, want to say, I, speaking of the stars real quick, Stars Scream got a t-shirt today. I want to say thank you, Stars Scream, for purchasing that. And we're going to have Final Frontier news, uh, t-shirts, and all kinds of stuff coming out very soon. So look for that video update about the merch for the channel. That would help us support the channel and you guys be able to wear that. Anyway, sorry, Jesse. No, it's fine, man. Um, Stars Scream's awesome. <laughs> uh, okay, so... You were just talking about the all the ancient places. Okay, so I'm um, I'm thinking next week they'll probably come up again, but mainly just the um, I guess Egyptian one to start. But it all it all kind of runs together because that these lines they give you an advantage. Um, anytime you have an energy buildup, it gives you an advantage. Um, it's like I use crystals gives me an advantage. I don't. I can go without them. You can go without those. You don't have to be on these lines to to do anything. You can you can do all the prayers and worship all the, whatever you do. You can do it anywhere. But it gives. Um, I wanted to get into maybe sound healing and stuff next week because uh, that's you, a lot of this went into like chakras and there's balancing about this. That's what it, that's what this gets into really. Um. There's tones. I don't, I'm not even sure, Dave. I don't want to say this wrong, but there, isn't there tones that are even hard to be heard by ear, oh, but yeah. they still affect? There's got to be. Yeah, there definitely is. I, yeah, I, I, mean, I can th tell you that. There's many frequencies. Um, oh I'll, yeah. And there's um, I don't know. That's to me. That's what I at least have gathered that you know the pyramids were for. It's very basically. Dude, it's, it's it's similar to the visual when you're looking at an LCD screen or something and the rotation of the refresh rate of the screen. Mm -hmm. You don't see it, you don't notice it really, but you wonder why you get a headache, and it's because mm. the the screen is off. And it's and if you were to film it in a certain in a certain way, you would see in a slower motion or with a whatever I forget the the radar calculator, whatever they call it, um, you'd see the screen is flashing and blinking all the time, and, and you're not seeing that, but you're processing that in your brain, and it's create it, sometimes it creates a headache. Other times it may stimulate your eyes in a good way, but all those things are happening. And, and it when it stimulates your eye in a good way, serotonin builds up. Probably, you know, you release some of that, and so then you're it's pleasurable. Um, that somebody owns a patent to that, by the way. And I don't. I wish I had the information here right now. I don't have it, but somebody owns a patent to these to certain frequencies, and probably somebody owns a patent to all the frequencies, but. It's interesting who holds the patterns to what frequencies and what you can do, and, and that's a whole other thing. We've come up with so many ideas, and, and just, just, just alone look at the top 10 most questionable or shocking creations or patents and things like that that are they're held. Um, Sony holds the thing for your brain, I think. Um, and So there's a whole bunch of that stuff to get to, too, and we want to dive into all this throughout the next few weeks with you guys on this show area 51 is something that people really want to hear about and i would that's be, true i saw a lot of that tonight in the chat yeah i gotta be honest i'm open to doing an area 51 me and dave and jesse are fairly easy to connect with each other so perhaps we'll even do some of this stuff and we, we've discussed area 51 it. in the past and it's funny that you bring it up because it apparently is one of these many locations and you find again you find this with the, not only a lot of places of worship but military bases area 51 apparently is 
on a ley line. They, wow. And uh, so there's there that connects to this situation. What is it? How does it benefit? You know what I mean? Air it's a place line. of power. If you can utilize it and you know the manners to utilize right. it, the the um, rituals, the, the the way that you set up structures, buildings, mm. you can actually make it benefit anything that you want. Perhaps. Anything. What if you could find the out? The Chinese know this is feng shui. Right. Now, yeah. could it be? I, yes. Could it even be? You have a certain element that performs better in that location, like anything you want. You want somebody to be the best killer on the planet. You can set that up. You want the best engineers in the world to figure out how to fold time in half. You can do that as well. It's a manner of setting up the environment on that ley line to focus that energy to your liking, whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish. Well, that's very interesting, guys. I think this is a a great episode and a big tease here at the end as far as I'm concerned. So we'll continue with it on the next episode, guys, every Tuesday night around 10.30 p.m. Eastern Time, U.S. Uh, we'll, we'll again be here. Uh, we'll come up with a more clear topic or topics next week. Perhaps we'll run it down almost maybe like an ESPN I have, crawl. Uh, Yes. After we go off the air, I have a couple of ideas, or not just ideas, I have a couple of things. Okay, well, that's... I'll, I'll talk to you when yeah, we go no, off the air. I'm not going to hang I up think on we you. Might have, there might have, we might have to upload more stuff for you guys. That, you I know. think that's, I think that would be um, preferable. I'd like to do that. So, guys... And it's kind of, it's, yeah, it's, I, I it's, a lot of people out there have stuff to say, so it's interesting. Uh, we love you guys. Thank you for listening to Final Frontier News. If this is your first time listening, make sure to subscribe to hear us every Tuesday. More stuff coming. And the store is coming as well if you want uh, the T-shirts and the things like oh, that. Wow. Um, I'd like to encourage people to communicate with me directly on Twitter at Devious Dave Rose so that any ideas that you might have on future shows or any discussions you would like to have on what I have spoken on, I'd very much be up for. So check me out at Devious Dave Rose on Twitter. All right. And Jesse, do you want yours or no? It doesn't exist. <laughs> well, you can still find me at Joe Cronin Show over on my Twitter, part of my other channel, of course, and this one as well. Thank you guys again for listening, and stay tuned for more updates and also the Final Frontier News Twitter account that will be up soon so you can interact that way where we'll be putting up lots of imagery um, to many of the things that we speak about, which I think that will be fairly interesting as well. And we'll take calls next Tuesday again, so uh, maybe we'll get some people will be less shy then. Uh, you guys have a great night. And I have no better way to close it, Dave. I'll just use your intro, outro. Good night. From the furthest reaches of the universe to the innermost depths of the mind, this is Final Frontier News.